We can call it like that. The Sloth Session IPA. Yeah. So today we're brewing two beers at once. Double trouble. We're brewing an IPA and an Oktoberfest. Yay. Yay. <laughs> Emmett's not here yet, so I'm just going to start without him. So Emmett went to the homebrew store yesterday and got our grains pre-ground so we don't have to go through that uh, step, which is nice. Okay. So now we got our IPA over here. All right, here we go, IPA. Looks like we have oh, some, some oatmeal going oats on. in there, yeah. And again, we're just going to break up the chunks and get some even disbursement of the grains in the grain basket here. And then we're going to start the mash. We're doing both at 152. Both at 152. All right. I'm going to flip on my pump after I open my valve. And we're cooking. Mash is done. A little late today, guys. Sorry. Sorry, I had to hold it down without you. So what I like to do is obviously turn the pump off. I usually just leave the element on. Kind of let this suck back down into the pump a little bit. And then I turn the ball valve on the kettle. I'll lift the basket out if you want to just slide those hooks in. Will do. We went camping. It's cold. Let that drain for about 10 minutes. Usually you put that down a little angle. Yeah, then you give it a good tilt. That way, liquid's all gonna go in there. So we're looking for a 1034. I did rinse the refractometer off. Looks like it, it's about 1036 or so. Yeah, I mean, we're at about 1035. It's a uh, small beer. Sometimes they can be kind of thin and watery. So we did flaked wheat, flaked oats, and flaked barley. Mm -hmm. Give it some body, some mouthfeel. And then for the uh, IPA, we're using London Ale 3 by Y Yeast. These have a little, there's like a little pack inside of here that you need to find. There it is. So it's right there. So basically you find it. Oh my gosh. Give it a smack. And then I like to give it the old, give what have you. Those. Give it one of those. <laughs> Um, so you've done that before. And release. To release the yeast in <laughs> So you do one of these. A good shake. You want to let it sit for about three hours. So this will expand as it goes. We're not making a yeast starter, mainly because this is such a small beer. Yeah. It's going to be 4%. This is plenty of yeast. Yeah. And then we're only putting two and a half gallons in each of these. So again, there's no need for a yeast starter. Yeah. So Makes it easy. I, in my mind right now, I'm thinking about Emmett <laughs> on like a baking show. Should I start a baking show? Do channel? a bake go. Let me know if you guys want to see a baking tray. Damn, smack it here, yeah. mix that in, throw yeah. it in there, add some ball it up, boom. Uh, Emmett, the ShamWow guy. Uh. <laughs> Actually, the ShamWow works well because he makes a lot of spills. I just I spill, spill guy. I just blue yeah. green beer. I just had to clean up. I have a ShamWow. <laughs> it's all clean. I just use one. I made one little spill. Per hour. <laughs> per hour. We're at a really slow boil right now. And then I'll just keep the, the lid on, keep an eye on it once it starts to it boil to pop it off. And, it, and for people out there who aren't aware, it's hot when it boils, so you want to take Don't it do off that. Here. So on this session beer, recipe is sort of a New England IPA in a way with the flake barley, oats, and wheats. So instead of doing a boil kettle hop edition for bitterness, I think we're gonna try doing all Whirlpool editions, and that should bring us into the IBU rating. The only IBU rating I could find this was 30. I put in the Beer Smith with a 20 minute Whirlpool edition, two ounce of mosaic, and then we're gonna do a dry hop for three days towards the end of fermentation. So we're not gonna do any kettle editions. Okay. Uh, this is new to me. I've never done it, did a bunch of reading on it. It's a day of firsts. Going to get a lot of the oils out of the hops during the whirlpool. You're going to get some bitterness. You should get a lot of front nose aroma. I don't know how we're going to do this. We can only cool one at a time. Awesome. Yeah, I would have liked to have staggered these by like 20 minutes. Somebody didn't show up until like... Someone had a hit <laughs> procedure. Oh, Emmett. Someone came in. That was big. I came in late. Yeah, someone was very late this morning. Someone. So I always like to recirculate for the last... 10-15 minutes 
of the um, boil to go through the pump and through the flat plate. It's always a good idea to obviously clean these really well, but there's a ton of little crevices in here. I'm gonna turn the element off on this guy. Well, let's add these guys. Okay. So we're gonna do two ounces of mosaic. I'm just gonna throw them right in. Oh, no. Unprotected? <laughs> Not using the hot filter today. <laughs> what? The kettle screen's on. There's a little uh, bazooka screen on the bottom. Right. So we're doing two ounces mosaic, a little whirlpool action. We're at 188 degrees right now. We're gonna let these whirlpool for 20 minutes or so. According to Beersmith, that should give us right around 30 IBUs. We got another ounce that we're gonna dry hop with later. We did not work block this one either. So exciting. Because we wanted to be a little Kind of wanted to be a little bit hazy. Yeah. Kind of in that New England IPA. Nitty gritty. Yeah, just no reason to try and clarify something that isn't yeah. really supposed to be no. clear. Let's see how much more that poofed up. Ooh, so poofy. I know. But we're gonna turn the pump off. You can hear it. Just hear it doing its thing? Yeah. Nice. It's like a seashell. Alright, and then try to pump back on. What are, you, what are you trying to hit with this one? 66 ish, 65. Which, our terminal is around 70. We need to take a heavy reading. I didn't know where the glass uh, things went. Perfect. Glass thingies? Those thingies? I don't know what else you'd call it. Bolt. They're round, they're made of glass. So. They hold liquid, sometimes <laughs> solid. I didn't use I don't it. Know what else you would call for it? Cereal. It's a glass thingy. I wouldn't call it a bowl. That is definitely a bowl. The IPA. Test that right now. Okay, we were a little bit high on the pre-boil at one point. What is our estimate? It's 1041. Oh, right at about 1040, actually. Yeah. Not bad. But as soon as I had like everything perfectly dialed, I brewed a few. I'll, I'll make sure we put all the settings on the website that we're using. So we're pitching the yeast into... The old fermented tater. This is the guy. Lots of pressure going on in there. Oh, this, am I doing honors? This is the London Ale. Number three. Stand back. Stand back. You nervous? Good. I don't think we'll have an issue with a blow off of this. It's because it's such a small beer. That's good for it's definitely gonna. It's gonna <laughs> definitely blow off. Could you use star sand like in a shower, or is that not suggested? A little known fact about Emma: he showers once a month and uses PBW. <laughs> he gets real clean. Yeah. His skin falls off. Yeah. He, he regrows just, it every yeah. month. Why it's so pale? <laughs> so that's the uh, four percenter. Well, this is a knockoff of a local beer called oh, Ceremonial. I wouldn't say it's a knockoff. We enjoy the beer. Burial makes a really nice. Session IPA. Yeah. We saw the ingredient list and took a stab at it. They have great artwork. They've got a picture of Tom Selleck and the sloth painted on the side and of they're, the they're Maybe nice. um, as an ode to um, Tom Selleck. We could call like it that. the sloth session IPA. Yeah. All right, guys. Okay. Good job. 10 gallons that of beer. That was fun. Triplets. Pretty much. So today we brewed 10 gallons of beer. We have a sloth session IPA. We just named it the sloth. We have our Mocktober Fest beer, our ale. And then we have our Oktoberfest lager. Yep. And we got 10 gallons. I'm so proud of you guys. So proud of you guys. Yeah. All right. Amendment today. This is so fun.